Hello everyone, I am Faiza Rizvi, editor of Oil and Gas Middle East. We're here at Adipec today and I'm joined by Paul Bodgers. He's the VP of Hydrogen with Shell. Thank you, Paul, for joining us today. Great to be here. Right, Paul, now we'll start by talking about, you know, what role is Shell playing in helping establish a global hydrogen economy? And if you could tell us about that. Yeah, so um, I always say that I have by far the best job in Shell because I have the privilege of leading a global team that looks at building out exactly this, um, this global hydrogen value chain, if you like. Now, this sounds all very grandiose, but you have to start somewhere. Um, and I think what's, what's really important for us is that when we build these value chains, we build them from the demand backwards. So we look at the customers, we look at where can we secure the anchor demand, and then build value chains all the way back from the, the distribution, the production at scale, uh, and in case of green hydrogen, all the way up to owning and building the renewables that feed that whole chain. Great point, Paul. And this morning, you know, the opening ceremony we heard from our Saudi energy minister on, let's talk about hydrogen by itself, not shades of hydrogen, right? So if you could tell us about, you know, how can decarbonized hydrogen play a vital role in helping us achieve that net zero goal that we're all striving to achieve? Yeah, excellent. And if I get uh, a penny for every time people ask me about green, blue, Aids of gray, hydrogen. <laughs> what is the right color? I think at the end of the day, it's a very um, uh, moot point. Decarbonizing hydrogen in itself, if we look at the carbon emissions of hydrogen today, the gray hydrogen, if you like, that's already a very substantial kind of uh, source of emissions. It's, it's over 800 uh, million tons of CO2 emitted from today's hydrogen production. Even if we could back out as much of that existing gray hydrogen, and Shell, by the way, has pledged to reduce 65% of its hydrogen um, production and make that clean hydrogen, uh, that's already a very big step to make. Now, beyond that, beyond hydrogen in its current use as feedstock in petrochemicals, uh, you're looking at steel making, you're looking at heavy duty transport, you're looking at a myriad of kind of uh, cases. But start close to home, start with your own demand, start with decarbonizing the hydrogen that is already used today. Very good point, Paul. Thank you. Now, when we talk about you know any energy forms, there's always a discussion around policy, right? So, if you could tell us, Paul, what policy frameworks are really needed to support that you know investment for more demand, supply, you know, and infrastructure that's needed for more upscale of hydrogen? Yeah. So, so the interesting part of my job is that it's a global mandate. So, I see policies in Europe, in the UK in China as well as in the US and in Canada. Very interesting, right. And you can compare and contrast and you see that some policymakers want to be perfect. And, and Europe is a case in point where the policy uh, makers are very kind of rigorous in their assessment of what qualifies as clean or green hydrogen. But you're actually stuck in a bureaucratic loop there. UK is more pragmatic, it has a 10-point plan, it has a sub-target for different types of hydrogen, but again there, the incentives are really hard to get at. And if you look at the, the debate today, people have started to look towards the US and say, this is a very pragmatic way. So it's got a terrible name, the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, but it's a very pragmatic set of policies that I think will actually pull a lot of the investment towards uh, North America. Wonderful. Thank you, Paul. I think you made some very interesting points. Well, now let's now talk about, you know, this coordination that you might see between public and private, you know, organizations at both national and international levels. You really, what kind of coordination is needed, Paul, do you think, to increase that, you know, um, this ensure that we have a more stable supply and demand of hydrogen? Yeah. No, it's a really important point. So if you look at the level of investment required, no single company, even a company the size and scale of Shell, uh, could put the hundreds of billions, if not trillions, into the wholesale change of the energy system. Um, so what you need in terms of public-private partnership is uh, you know, focus on bringing down what some people call the green premium on the use of hydrogen in different kind of use cases, as well as focusing really on the infrastructure that is there to connect supply and demand. And there's some great cases uh, of that. Uh, I'm a native of the Netherlands. There's talk about a hydrogen backbone, repurposing right. a lot right. of the natural gas kind of grid as a way of transporting hydrogen. That's a really important piece of infrastructure that I think only governments can, can help create. Um, so that's where the, the public and the private need to go hand in hand and also have a carrot and stick approach. So really think about stimulating demand, stimulating supply, and then making sure that it's connected. 
Wonderful. Thank you, Paul. I think you shared some great insights on hydrogen. Well, on behalf of the oil and gas Middle East team, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.